even though like even though I have to like go to the bathroom still and I'm sick and, yeah. and the Leaf game's on right now. Oh yeah. Uh, Austin Matthews now has had 68 goals. That's very nice. And as you know, uh, the game never likes to end during showtime. Yeah. Uh, before showtime, it, you know. And of course, it's 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 never it's always close, right? So always close. New Jersey's up by a goal, and it's now is the moment of five minutes to go. You know, Ken Matthews score seventy goals tonight. He, the guy's crazy. Crazy. How you doing tonight, Brandon? How how you doing tonight, Hilding Donaldson? Doing great. There's two of me again. <laughs> Sorry, I have my other guy over there. <laughs> Did your spring come back, Brandon? Spring? Oh yeah. And it's gonna go away again. I'll explain tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> John Tavares scores. Tie game. What I tell you? What I tell you? I'm getting the uh, getting it all set up here. The hardest part is I I can't really I'm not really ready until you know I'm ready. Oh yeah. And I can't be ready until I'm started. Pretty much. That's how I do my radio shows too. <laughs> Just think of something and talk about it. Here we go. Okay, so at least I got the image up now. You know, we're looking good, and I'm, I'm, you know, I can share it to other places. So while I share it to other places, maybe you know, how's your week? Tell, tell me a couple things here. Tell you a couple of things. Well, I uh, shaved some hair off. That's what I did. Oh, I didn't shave it. I had professional help. Last time I tried to cut my own hair, it was a disaster. So I have to. Let someone else do it. <laughs> it's punk rock to let someone to do your own hair. A punk rocker. It's punk rock to do your own hair, man. I, I, I got so. an actual proper cut. I look very nice right now. Tie game, four minutes to go. They're sharing the feed, go. sharing everywhere. Let's get this show in the road, everybody. Just show about. So what happened this weekend was the Day Glow abortions came up and played in Prince George. And... Um, you know, I haven't been around humans for months, so of course I get sick afterwards. <laughs> you know, that's that was a given. So uh, I welcome everybody. If you do want to hit the thumbs up there, this is the Comedological Report recording session. Probably should say that right off the bat. And we're like four minutes in and people have no idea what we're even watching yet. <laughs> Meteorological Report, comedy, meteorology. This, so uh, we, we live stream this at seven o'clock. We hit record, record. We make a... TV and radio show with Frankie McDonald and Brandon Houck and our gang of friends. Tonight we got more meteorologist Marcus coming. We got Hilding Donaldson's out there as well. Um, some special guests. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> so I was getting these weird messages in the mail and emails there from Kim Gucci, you know, asking me, you know, things like, what's your favorite number? And <laughs> you know, as, like, what's this about? You know, is this uh, is this a hack? Did someone hack Kim's? No. Uh, so I got this box in the mail this oh, week. Yeah. I guess Kim and drummer Dan Barton, a good friend of mine as well from Red Deer, Alberta, have come scheme together to give me this this present. So oh, nice. Yes. So and, what uh, is so your favorite number? The, uh, 1779. <laughs> yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna come on uh, sometime around the time Frankie comes is done, and uh, oh, yeah. I mean, they'll probably come on earlier. But we'll we're gonna open this box together and see what's in there, and and we'll ask them what that's all about. Oh, okay. Also, had a really nice uh, care package given to me by a supporter last weekend. So thank you, Lana, if you're watching. Uh, I was really kind of you. Five five two minutes to go. And the devil score. Ah, that okay. hasn't happened. No, no, it hasn't <laughs> happened. In fact, Tavares is deep in behind New Jersey net. Pass out in front. Nylander fans on the shot. Broken up. Jersey clears the puck out of the zone. Back to center ice. Toronto dumps it back in. 
And Nylander's up in the rush. Oh, wow. Tavares just misses a shot. The captain there just about scores. But Toronto, it's all Toronto in their net uh, zone. One minute and 30 to go. So uh, this is this is this tense. It's almost like you've uh, announced sports on the radio before. <laughs> I would love to be a hockey radio broadcaster, actually. I, I think I would, would do quite well to call the game. Uh, from listening to Joe Bowen, how he calls games over the years, uh, you, know, you got to use words, you got to use terms like half boards and uh, near side, far side, things that are really quickly descriptive to to give the audience that you know that's what Joe Bowen and Jim Ralph do better than anybody else in radio, in sports radio. They're they're <laughs> the best. Good evening, Mark Ingles. Good evening. I'm just uh, finishing setting everything up, and uh, you know, I think I'm more or less ready to go tonight. Uh, yeah, I sent everybody the links. And I'm curious oh, is uh, is the whole two Brandon thing just going to be perpetual now? Are we trying well, to stuff the ballot box to make it look like we have more people here? Sure, why not? If we get more funding, the more no, we don't get any funding. And the other thanks, the other guy is going to be waiting outside. Score. <laughs> New Jersey did score. It's five four oh. minute fourteen to go. I should not have said anything. Whoops. No, now you're the, the worst person <laughs> that I know. I'll blame the other Brandon. That's right. We'll blame him. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Because we have two. He's going to be brilliant. outside. Yeah. You know, I've never met anyone before this whose last name is iPhone. Is that a Canadian thing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know why it's says iPhone. <laughs> So I gotta move I some things around here, but you know what we got here? You know what we got here? Ooh, some stormy boys. Yeah, this is a uh, mesoscale scale discussion, corrective discussion going on right now in the U.S. It's going to expire at 37 minutes, but there's a tornado watch. 106 is going on, portions of North Carolina, Southern Virginia. This is happening at the moment, people. Uh, I'm just going to move this so you can kind of see the image a little better. <laughs> Short damaging wind gusts, a couple tornadoes continue this evening. Short Boeing segments and few supercells continue. So uh, um, Boeing means the, the storm is kind of the line of the storm you see here is got kind of a bow shape. It's bowing out. Yeah, and uh, that's dangerous. And it will probably because... lose its seat and crash, right? And then have yeah, to fire Bo its seat. Boeing is dangerous because it might eject a door <laughs> and strike a house. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> So that is going on there. Uh, so definitely rotating superstructures are in this line. We can just have a quicker look at it uh, here. But we got. I'm interested to see that tornado warning. Um, well, that does have a I, nice little hook there. Yeah. Expires in five minutes. So I don't know if we actually have much here. Well, we can look on the velocity and see. That's precip. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, right yeah. There. Yeah, there's something going on here. Oh, yeah. Can oh, you man. turn on the um, inspector tool at your top right there? To the right. Uh, uh, sorry. Nope, not that one. The, the next one over. There you go. Okay, so we got minus three meters per... No, no, no. The, sorry, the, the one that looks like a rifle. Yeah, um, I was on it. I, yeah. Uh, what happens is I think there's a bit of a delay... Yeah. Um, and me putting things up. So sometimes just. So we've got three meters per second on the green side and then go to the south, south, uh, south of the green. Because that's where that there. cyclonic rotation is at. That's pretty our, impressive. You know, 20 meters per second on one and... side, three on the other. So 23 meter per second differential. That's about. 55 miles an hour, 80 something kilometers per hour, maybe 90 kilometers per hour. That's respectable, but if there is a tornado, it's not doing, uh, it's not huge and bigly. That would yeah. be why there's not a tornado emergency. But no, uh, and as you look up the line too, you see that there's some other, there's areas. other areas that are churning and doing weird things. That's pretty. Typical as I'm Florida sure you looked guys pretty know. good this morning. Yeah. The other Mesa scale discussion that's going on, though, this is uh, a little more interesting. Oh, yeah, there's... Here we go. Four seconds. Toronto power play. Two, one, and it's game over. 
Uh, still flash. Good, I can turn it off. It Go Supersonics. I can turn it off. That's all I want. So uh, flooding risks all through here. Flash yeah, flooding. I think all there's through still here, a flash so... flood of emergency in the Pittsburgh area there. I think. Oh, that's not great. Oh. And why don't we just turn on emergency? It's not bobbling like it was an hour ago. Or... My wife's cousin seems to be under the impression that Pittsburgh is a happening place now. Oh yeah. I've never been to Pittsburgh, but. How do I turn off the blur that I turned on a week ago? I think she's shy. Happen and how? Well, apparently, like, it's where all the Gen Z kids are going is Pittsburgh and Detroit. Um, because that's the only, ma- those are the only big cities where they can afford to live. I just love this um, sort of off topic a little bit, but. The the way the mountains are shaped in the states through here, I just it always looks so cool to me. I flew when I flew over it. It was really going to um, when I flew over it going to Baltimore. It was really impressive, actually. And you may know, I don't know, you may not know. Um, those mountains were built by colliding continents and were at one point as tall as the Himalayas. I did know that actually. The uh, rock is over a billion years old where I grew up, uh, associated with the Laurentians up there. Not too much different in age nearby. A little but bit. Of... It wasn't a rock. It was a rock lobster. <laughs> a little bit of uh, precip going on in the caribou. And that's good. We really, really need this right now really need this things are really dry uh is it rain that... though or is it snow uh well this would be snow possibly down here but this is this is looking rain this is not precipitation, precipitation. Yeah, i, don't, oh, like I don't think when it's dry in the spring you want rain <laughs> well there is that reality right but that's what we're getting in any precip right now people are saying it would be better than nothing um yeah, here that... we are probably in the next week and well is going to lose our snow or at least the bulk of it in the valley. And, you know, that's incredibly early, man. Like, It sounds like... Um, it sounds like... Oh, I've got, a, uh, I've got an echo on my end. Uh, it sounds like... Oh, no, it was an echo because my kid is repeating me. Um, it sounds like um, Leavenworth, Washington, which is west of Wenatchee, Melted out about a month this earlier than usual. Do because there's a little bit of snow in the Rocky or uh, Columbia's. A little bit there. Um, we'll stop this. Currently in Canada, there's some other stories that we're looking at. Ah, uh, I'm still not smooth at anything I do. You know, you would think if you were 70 years old, you'd be smooth by now. <laughs> Getting there. Rainfall warnings. Northern Ontario, Elliott Lake, uh, where Makwa is. Strong winds, 80 kilometers an hour, 30 to 60 millimeters of rain in there. Uh, I think that's more or less sort of the numbers you're seeing throughout here, either 30 to 40 or up to 60 in places. So heavy rainfall in Northern Ontario and Northern Quebec and some possible rainfall going on tapering Friday morning in Southern Ontario as well. And out where Frankie is not quite, he's in Sydney, uh, 75 millimeters of rain going on there, but it's probably raining on Frankie right now. We're probably going to see him inside tonight. 110 km an hour gusts. They sweet. They swept. I still don't really know how we're supposed to say that. And we're morning down in New Brunswick. 90 km an hour. Uh, okay. Oh, There's that. There's that. Pivotal. I got to move our faces <laughs> some more. There's all that going on there. Yeah, that's uh-huh. a big one. 
Had some flashes of lightning in, uh, near Hilding today, north of Fraser Lake. So we all had that, rain uh, most of the day. Pardon me, Hilding? We had rain most of the day, although the sun just came out now. It's been oh, yeah. not rainy, but just overcast here today. So we see all that storm that's currently going on in the United States is going to move up into uh, Quebec, Ontario, Maritime Provinces. And look at that, a couple dry days through most of the United States looking like, eh? Yeah, when I was looking through, there's not a whole lot going on down here next week. Um, but just kind of whatever. We got this low that's going to park off of California. Well, not really park. It's going to be down in California Saturday, Sunday, and then be swept up by the mean flow. Um, and that'll create a moist weekend for California and Southern Oregon, but... I mean, not not much to write home about. This will, though, I think this will bring the snow levels down a little bit. But um, as we progress into next week, troughing is going to really dominate um, a lot of Canada and a lot of the northern tier of the United States. And so, like, here, Monday and Tuesday, we're looking at snow levels around 2,000 to 2,500 feet. So that's, uh, I don't know, 700 meters or so. And there it is pushing down there. So when you, you look back at a bunch of frames for a while, you had like generally most of the United States looking dry and above zero degrees Celsius. And Canada mostly below. Uh, here's you can see some of that temperature recovering in southern Ontario in next week. I guess that's Colorado low forming of some sort, say. A bit of snow in Alberta, Saskatchewan still possible. So there's a bit you're expecting a, a pretty good sized storm next week, aren't you, Brandon? Yeah, looking like it could be in for strong winds and heavy snow. It'll be pretty cold there, too. I saw um, something like Monday or Tuesday, you might be 15 or more degrees C below average. Oh, yeah. That's going to, yeah, and then that will be, yeah, Tuesday into Wednesday at least. Yeah, that's going to get wild on the prairies. Yeah, it looks like we're really going to miss that in BC, you know? And yeah, so what, what's gonna what's gonna happen is this is gonna kind of slide down BC, and then the lee side cyclogenesis is really gonna enhance it for Alberta and Saskatchewan. Yep. Very windy. Uh, snow in the prairies and even in Manitoba, northern Ontario, but most of Ontario are looking at rain then as you get in next Thursday. And now we're looking a week out, so here's the point at which you know you can't can't read too much into what's showing on here. And by that means you could probably assume that that maybe by next week Thursday there'll be a low, but exactly where and how and what the colors are and you know, that's sort of up in the air. Right, but uh, always always assume it's going to be the weather you don't want it to be. <laughs> well, if you live in Wells, that's the reality. You know, the thinking being though that this will probably play out heading through eastern Canada and yeah. uh, northwestern or northeastern United States by the end of next week. So, yeah, and look at this. This may be a severe, this may create a severe weather outbreak, uh, Texas over to the deep south too. Well, you're gonna have uh, definitely. You got some cold up here and some some moisture available to come up and cold dipping pretty far down actually eh? a little bit of snow even in the uh the western states there dang in kansas those uh -huh. aren't mountains there no exactly but you know now we're now we're 10 12 days out so take it with a grain of salt right yes but Somebody might be getting snow somewhere in here next week still. <laughs> you know, there you go. Uh, that's enough of this model. I do have Windy up too if there's anything that anyone wants to look at. We have been talking on my channel, and Mark and I are probably going to be making a forecast, fire forecast video together next time, talking about thunderstorm pattern probabilities for BC this summer. But uh, this is important. <clears throat> especially for uh, Hilding and uh, farmers, because already we're looking at drought intensity. This is just at the zero to 40 centimeters. And we're looking at already 
uh, parts of the central interior are hitting that are drying out quickly. Uh, this hasn't changed too much, but this spreading has changed. Now, if we go to to uh, a little deeper, you see that it's deep. The, you can go pretty far deep, and you're not finding a lot of moisture. And here's what's telling: is when you go jump that ahead. That is how it goes, isn't it? When you jump ahead past my birthday, here's drought intensity predictions for British Columbia popping up quickly. So what we don't really have yet, I mean, Northern Alberta, um, Saskatchewan, and definitely up into, uh, you know, Northwest, Northwest territories and whatnot. Right. So this is concerning. What we don't have, as you just saw, is any expectations for any real heat in the near future. And that's what could really trip things off. You know, if we get some warm weather, if we get some thunderstorm patterns sometime in and around there too. So we could have an early, early start to fire season. Brandon's outside. What's going on out there, Brandon? I'll turn oh, this off. Yeah, we've got a, uh, that's a schnook arch off to the west here. There it is, the schnook arch. That's going to warm air to move in. And I still have my puddle from last weekend still here. <laughs> Splashing it. Uh, I didn't put my boots on, so probably not a good idea this time. But. It's heart shaped. Don't you it love is. puddles? Jump in heart it. Puddle. There it is. Yes. I'll have to get my, my good boots on, you know, these shoes I can't get. But, no. Are you going to start the show outside again tonight then? Sure. Yeah, I'll start it outside. Of course. That sounds great. That sounds great. I could do that too. Um, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm sick. I don't want to do anything. But um, <laughs> um, I could easily get enough internet standing just outside my window here to we could we could have oh, more yeah. on the ground reporting, you know. On the ground reporting, yeah. You can see the I can move behind these trees. You can see the lenticular clouds over here. Very kind of like the big nice lennies. Yeah, let's see the lennies. Yes. We could flip the camera around. There we go. I don't know. If and on here but anyways they're way over there you can see them yeah little lenticular clouds in the far the far distance eh? it's pretty far. good oh yeah there's some jet flying over me probably uh air france or something we we'll get international flight yeah, yeah they're probably up there saying in french they're looking down and they're saying in french like we're on tv sometimes they get portland flights if they're going to europe they fly right over top of me so yeah, yeah. That's like at work, um, when the upper level conditions are favorable for it, the contrails on the flights going from like LA and the Bay Area over to Europe, they do the great circle and yeah. those will they'll fly over Portland and then the contrail will drift over our solar sites and at high noon that can decrease generation by up to forty percent temporarily. Okay, yeah, you can sort of see the contrail back there, it's hidden behind the clouds. They're uh, they're spraying <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a good website to see um, uh, precipitation at specific weather stations in Canada? How it compares to average. Oh, uh, I there is a spot on ECC that you can go through. Yeah, on the Army Canada Climate Change Canada site. There, you can go through yeah, the city. Find it on analysis and modeling. Analysis. Yeah. Analysis and modeling. All right. Uh, on under yeah. the main menu, and you got the regional determination deterministic prediction system and all that. Oh, Probabilist. Not, not that menu. That menu is for. Uh, that menu's for immigration and crap. <laughs> you haven't convinced me to move up there yet. Oh, there we go. We will once your co country collapses. More. I mean, once it collapses, more. Yeah, yeah. You know, my bug out plan used to be to just go somewhere in the middle of nowhere in BC, but now I'm going to Joey Only's house. That's everyone's plan. I'm going to stop by Hilding's house and pick up the calf that was born during the solar eclipse. And then I'm going to ride the calf to Joey's house. He's probably better set up for it, you know, in terms of 
<laughs> I probably won't even go to go to Hildings. I mean, he's got cattle. He's just, he's got you know, better climate for growing, and you know it's it's cold up here, man. It's it sucks. I was so happy to get out and go see Dago abortions last weekend, and and you know as soon as you get out of Wells, there's like no snow and things are nice and it's warm and the world's awesome. Of course, nice to me is like eight degrees is hot. <laughs> I think we did 17 today. Yeah, we yeah. did 17. It was plus six when I was outside today. It was beautiful. But very, very overcast and very warm day. So we should have Frankie here in just three minutes' time. I, I don't think we're being watched very heavily today, but that's okay. That's okay <laughs> for anybody who is watching. Thank you very much for help. You, you can't even make a TV show that people are interested in. Not with us on it, at least. Two and a half minutes to Frankie time. I'll do uh Man, I'm trying to find this data I want. Gosh dang it. <laughs> yeah. Um there we go. Yeah, you're talking about that cow sport in the eclipse there, Mark. Way. Uh, its mother died yesterday, so uh, no, we're going to have to. Uh, uh, we're bottle feeding it right now. We're going to have to wean it onto another cow. So it actually no. needs a mother right now, Mark. If you aren't, uh, if you aren't busy. Yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> You're so much interested well, in the eclipse cow. cow yesterday that lost your calf so now we can mother her across onto the other cow hopefully what was the last place she saw her calf did you ask her no nope. don't blame you yeah yeah feeling feeling like I had, had to go out to concerts and that's what happens and you know what I lost my tripod that I that's got the phone tripod I can put it on and it's also because of the way it sits I could put my cam on it as well so it was my cam holder during recording sessions so now I don't have a cam holder anymore but luckily I got I found some technology that works really well so I just stick it on the edge of this box and uh fucking there you go that's there awesome images coming in <coughs> oh Imogen's here what? That's terrific. Been a I while. She quit. No, she gets busy having a really awesome life. What? Well, people don't get busy. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> Never get. Oh. Frankie's coming in too. We're just about ready to go here. Just about ready to go here. Yeah. Hey, Frankie. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see Good you, to see Imogen. You again, Joey. Good to see you. Um, before we go, Imogen, I I have footage from the Day Glow tour this weekend, and we have permission to use it. So I would like to put that in the show if we can, in cool. the final cut. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. It was wicked. They were. And I found it on Compound Media. Came to see me for the eclipse. You know, I. Just... I was sitting right here in this chair, and, and there was Murray sitting right there, and multitudes of hash pipes going around. It was a fucking great weekend. Great concerts. Great. I just, I totally needed that. Seven o'clock. Ready to go, Frankie? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Good day, Prince George, Winnipeg, Kamloops, and Rogers Television. Viewers, this is the Comedological Report. We got Brandon Houck outside. I will finish introducing the show in a minute, but Brandon Houck is outside right now on the spot. Brandon Houck, what you got? What do we got? Well, we do have some clouds that are hanging around us right now. And uh, these clouds are pretty warm clouds because they're Chinook clouds that are moving through at this hour. We've got a, a great show for you tonight on the Comedological Report uh, with Frankie McDonald. We've also got uh, Joey Only, Hilde Donaldson. We've got Imogen, Cookie Bailey, Mark Ingalls. And I believe there's some other guests coming on tonight 
as well. So we are definitely looking forward to that. Now, we have some big weather coming our way next week. And as you see here, it uh, feels like spring, but probably by this time next week, it will not feel like spring. And I'll have those details coming up a little later on in the program. And now I'll send things back inside to Frankie McDonald. Hey, Frankie, Frankie McDonald. Uh, just before we go with you, Frankie, I'm expecting some guests to come on the show in about 15 minutes' time. And we, after the Frankie report, we'll have them. So my friend, uh, First Nations folk singer, song singer, songwriter, Kim Gucci, and my really good friend, drummer Dan Barton, who lives in Red Deer, um, and Hank Lee's just showing up. That's great. Um, they sent me this package, and we're going to open it together on the show once they get here. So we'll find out about that in a minute time. Uh, with us live on the show right now, Frankie, about to go in a second. That was Brandon Hauke you just heard out in Brooks, Alberta. Meteorologist Mark Ingalls is here. Associate producing, uh, producer Imogen Bailey is back. Wonderful. And Hilding Donaldson out in the farm is here with us as well. So Frankie McDonald, how are you doing so far, buddy? I'm doing great so far. And things are going great as well. And the weather all across the eastern United States is supposed to get lots of rain on Friday and Saturday. And Toronto's getting high winds and heavy rain, so it's Detroit, and in, including Jason Marshall's hometown, Dayton, Ohio. They're getting lots of rain. Where Jason Marshall, we don't have Cookie's podcast, is at. They're getting high winds and heavy rain. New York City as well, and Washington, D.C., Boston, and all those places. They're getting lots of rain in Virginia and all the way down to Carolinas and Florida. And Covent even going through Cuba, but it's going to die on Cuba. It's going to bring this snowstorm up and across northern Ontario, like Timmins, Ontario. It's going to be lots of snow up in northern Ontario as well. It may and bring there's... snow up in Baldor, Quebec, and we're in the rain to Quebec and all those places as well. It's really cold. It's cold all the time. Manitoba, it's going to get colder. British Columbia as well. They get warm air, cold air, fighting each other. Then they get some rain and showers heading for. California, Colleen, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, even down parts of Baja, California, Mexico. Lots of rain, thunder, service. It's also going on in Base Guy's hometown, Montreal, Quebec, where Base Guy show lives. There's going to be a big snowstorm next week in the prairies, Frankie. Yes, I did a forecast with them already. We'll watch that later in the show. What else you got, Frankie? They got thunderstorms headed for Base Guy's hometown tomorrow. Then it got really dry air in Arizona as right now. They're supposed to get some. That's where Gary and Dino is at in Arizona. They're getting in really hot weather. That right now it's really dry in Mexico as of right now. Lots of thunderstorms and rain going on in parts of Panama right now. And in weather down South America, lots of rain and thunderstorms going on in Brazil. Name is on rainforest. Then it got uh, lots of rain and thunderstorms next week going on in. Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador. It's really windy and dry. It's really dry up in northern Chile and down in southern Chile. Not mm, lots of not much rain going on. They got some rain heading to southern Chile on the coast areas of snow up in the mountains in southern Chile during the fall of the year right now. Up around Europe and the United Kingdom. Lots of systems and rain and Showers heading towards Scotland right now. It could be heading towards London, England next week as well. Then it got warm air, cold air fighting each other in England right now in Ireland, Wales, Scotland. Including Belfast, Ireland. And lots of warm weather in places like in Spain and Portugal. And warm air, cold air fighting each other in France. Then it got some cold weather heading towards France and Switzerland and parts of Italy right now and parts of Bosnia. Croatia and all those places as well. Then you got some cold weather in Greece as well. And could be some cold weather heading towards Greece. And Turkey's really hot there right now. And cold air fighting each other. Lots of snow showers up snow showers to Norway, Finland, Sweden right now. Then it got some rain hitting the showers heading towards Poland next week. In Belarus, even Moscow, in Western Pacific, lots of rain going on in China right now in thunderstorms. Mongolia is warming up. Siberia is gradually warming up. Lots of snow up in Siberia. And you clean up to scratch it. They're getting lots of snow because it's warming up there. In January, February, it's too cold for snow up there. 
they're getting lots of stone you got Tusk. In Siberia. Over in Yaktus, get temperature there. It's four and starting off minus four degrees. Then it's going to go up two plus two degrees and plus three degrees and plus five degrees next week in Yaktus. Over around in Lana. In a couple of months' time, Bangkok, Thailand will be in a rainy season. India will be in a rainy season. It's really hot and right now. Thunderstorms going on in Indonesia right now. Their rainy season's coming to an end in Indonesia. In India, it's really, really hot in India right now. India's gradually transitioned over to monsoon season. They're having their summer right now. In a couple of months' time, there'll be the monsoon season. Sri Lanka's getting into the monsoon season. They've got some rainy season starting up in Cuba in May, including Nigeria again, and all these places have got thunderstorms there right now. In Southern Africa, like Botswana, they're in, getting into dry season soon enough. Lots of rain thunderstorms going on in Congo, Gabon, DR Congo, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and parts of Mozambique, Madagascar, Rio, La Reunion, and the Island. Chance of thunderstorms there right now. In Southwest Pacific, there's a system. It's really, really hot in Northern Australia, but thunderstorms in the forecast. They got lots of rain and showers going on in Southeastern Australia. Down New Zealand, there's lots of. Lots of cold air and warm air fighting each other. It's fall the air there right now. Then it got some rain in North Island, South Island, New Zealand right now. Antarctica will be dark on 24 hours today. Up in the Arctic will be 24 hour daylight up there. Excellent, Frankie McDonald. Excellent. So we got a couple of guests that have come in, Frankie, I'd like to introduce you to. Uh, my friend Dan Barton and Kim Gucci have shown up. And I'll explain this in a second. Uh, Kim right now is in Penticton. I think Dan's in Red Deer probably still. And so uh, welcome to the show, Kim and Dan. We will watch Frankie's videos uh, later in the show, and then we'll, we'll go through our Ask Frankie question segment then, if everyone's okay with that. Um, so Kim, Dan, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Hi, it's good to be here. Hey, Joey. I'm actually in, um, I'm over in Kelowna right now. Hi, Kim. I'm doing great so far. I just think of a snowstorm heading for Calgary on Tuesday. I did a forecast on YouTube already for Calgary. Excellent. Thank you for the warning. I will make sure to not take off my winter tires if I head to Calgary. That means that Kelowna is the home of the Rockets WHO hockey team. You got her. You're dead right there. Right. You got that right. So uh, a few weeks ago, Kim, you started sending me some strange messages. And I thought at first... <laughs> Is Kim's account been hacked? And there are questions like, you know, what's your favorite number and things like that. So uh, I got this box in the mail from you. And uh, I'm going to open it in a few minutes. But I think I'd like to maybe hear what you have to say first uh, on the subject okay. here. Uh, sure. Well, I don't want to give away any, any clues to what's in that box. But I just want you to know that um, Dan and I... Dan and I, are, I'm, Dan's been my project manager. i am been working on a, a brand new album. I'm a musician, by the way, everybody. Uh, and I've been working on a brand new album for a while. And Dan's my project manager, my, my producer. And we both know you, Joey. And I've been, I mean, I've been your friend for a lot of years. I've had dinner at your house, um, seen you at festivals and such. But I've really noticed a big shift in who you are in community and how you, even the fact that you do this weather um, Zoom thingy weekly, I had no idea you did this. I know that you do weather reporting and such, and I follow you on YouTube. Um, but I also know that you've been sober and that's pretty huge in the world of music, especially to be able to maintain that lifestyle. I also know that you're a father and that you work hard in our community um, as a firefighter and as somebody just who really helps out up in the Wells community, even though you get a lot of pushback. Um, so Dan and I just sort of like saw all of this and then decided that we wanted to do something special for you. And I don't want to give any way in, give in any more way till after 
after you open the package. Let's do that then. It's my birthday next week, eh? I didn't know. That's amazing. Yeah. This is the last show before I turn 45. Ooh. I'm going to open this now. I'm already like kind of teary eyed. Um, lots of people do lots of nice stuff for me. That is awesome. Well deserved. <laughs> there it is. Oh. So I designed this jersey for the Prince George Cougars and Prince George, uh, obviously Prince George, uh, a couple months ago. And there was a game that took place called Indigenous Night. And Joey wasn't able to make it for many, many reasons. So Dan and I decided let's pool our money together and let's get Joey a sweater with his name on it and with his favorite number. So I was asking Joey questions like, hey, Joey, what's your mailing address? And then I'm like, hey, Joey, what's your favorite number? And and then he was like <laughs> getting and so he's all those other public figures take out their ages, the office. When they send pack send packages to like those other talk show hosts and things like this, they get their agency office, like a PO box. Yeah, that's exactly right. So there you go, Joey. Happy I birthday. love it so much. That's so so awesome. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> you had let Thanks, a little bird, you would let a little bird know that you would like to have one, and I just kind of put it together and. We appreciate all that you do for your community, Joey, and we appreciate how much you try to take care of your kids and everybody around you and just let you know that we notice, okay? And a lot of people notice. Keep doing good work, my friend. I appreciate it because I've been looking up to you guys, you know, the whole time before I even saved my own life, you know? Mm -hmm. Wear it well, my friend. I've been looking up to you guys for a long time as musicians, as friends, and and people I could just trust, and that's so special. Thanks. Thanks so much. You're so welcome. It looks like it fits you perfectly. It really does. I'm going to wear it a lot. <laughs> Let's see the back, Joey. I'm going to wear it a lot. Oh, I wasn't talking when I showed it off. There so we go. Could, no one got to yep. actually see, but now I can talk. There you go. Kim Gucci's design for the Prince George Cougars. Joey, that's oh, great. Never the design, awesome. the design, the design across the waist is um, that little symbolism in the middle is in carrier syllabics, which is bus cho, and bus cho means big cat, which translates to cougar. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like Joey that. Only. I like that. Um, hmm. The the only. Yeah. I like that a lot. I've always been the bobcat. Always okay. been a big cat. A boost cho. <laughs> that was the animal given to me. That was the, you know, my Mohawk friends back home. You see, Te hey, on to the Genkahuea because you have no clan. You... The Cougars are in the second round of WHO playoffs already. They They're are. Doing... They are. They're doing excellent. They're doing yeah. really, really well. While we have you, Kim, um, please talk about your projects right now. You're in Kelowna, so are you are I'm digging in Kelowna. tonight? No, um, actually, I just finished a tour. I did a five-day tour with Naomi Kavka and Ian Olmsted as a trio. We were in Langley, Coquitlam, Chilliwack, North Vancouver, and then played the Dream Cafe in Penticton um, just a couple nights ago. And I'm here in, in Kelowna now at the Pacific Contact, which is a performing arts conference. I sit on the board as a director and also as a cultural liaison, trying to help indigenize space and be a bridge so people can, um, you know, ask the questions and and just connecting and holding space for indigenous people. And Dan is my project manager on a brand new album that is being released on June the 13th. We've got one single out there in the world right now. If you want to check me out, it's um, just under my name, Kim Gucci, K-Y-M. G O U C H I E. And it's, um, we have a music a lyric video up. You can find me on YouTube and all the social platforms. I also have a brand new website. And the song is called The Territory Welcome Song, where I'm 
acknowledging the land and the territories in which I gather and uh, and travel to. And yeah, got another single coming out on May the 7th, um, which is my grandmother's song, At Tzu Shun. And yeah, it's been wonderful. It's been exciting. There's a lot going on. And I just, uh, I noticed something you said, Joey, uh, on one of the posts, you said that you really don't know how to get back into the music scene because it's such, it really is a booze culture. But I can tell you that there's been a shift. Like I've been, I have been a, a sober person from drugs, alcohol, and tobacco for over 20 years. And I've witnessed it's lonely it gets very lonely and it's hard to find your community again, but I want you to know that there is a community out here and that, that even the space right here, the Pacific contact, there is a place called the, they call it the blue room, which is a space where people could go hang out where there is no alcohol and that you could just like, you'll go hang out and not feel like you're in a green room, green room full of booze or a meet and greet full of booze and such, because Let's face it, in the music industry, it really is a, bo a booze culture. And when somebody's trying to be sober, I think um, a lot of our organizers and people are, have that awareness and they're not pushing it anymore. Like when you walk into a green room, somebody's not going to say to you, hey, you want a beer? You know, or when I walk onto a stage at a show, um, we could include it in our rider. Like, hey, I don't drink and I don't want my band members drinking during my show, so please don't offer them booze. And you just have to start speaking about it, talking about it, and people are understanding. And um, I just want to encourage you to put it out there. You know, there are all kinds of accessible spaces, safe spaces that are being created by other artists with other different needs, and you just put it out there. It's It's your new way of being in the world, and people have to get used to that. They want your music. They have to accept you the way you are and that you're still the amazing artist that you are. You're just in a sober state. And um, I think it's going to be really exciting to see what you come up with next. I know last weekend I had a pretty big step in that when Daglo came up. For the last three and a half years, three and a half years since I got sober, I haven't gone out, you know, like to social. I mean, I have the kids every weekend and I, then I'm gone all fire season and it's, you know, there's other reasons for it, but then when I have the opportunity to, I just don't anyways. And then, you know, sometimes financially, like between EI, it's like, uh, so they go came up and they played Prince George and they played in Wells and went to the shows. It was like the first time I was around. And then even after when they played on Sunday night, uh, here in Wells, uh, day glow and everyone came back down to my house and there was some partying happening in my house and it, and I allowed that to happen because it was a special occasion. Daigle, one of my favorite Canadian punk bands ever is here. Um, you know, but it was, that was a huge step to just being around any of that to, and then feeling like, Hey, I, I have a, I do have a place in this, you know, like. And that went big, okay. Yeah, it did. It did. did. Unfortunately I, I got the plague because I haven't been around humans for months. <laughs> you know, and it is the season, Joey. You go into yeah. a room with 150 people in Prince George, and what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. So, uh, for all you listeners on C for Radio, this is Kim Gucci. You've been hearing uh, C for 88.7 FM. We air on there, and CKW 95.9 FM, and CFBX 92.5 FM, and television watchers on Rogers TV, Vancouver Island. This is the Comedological Report so far. Um, Dan and Kim, I, I'd really like if you can stick along as long as you can. I got a couple people here we got to run through as we mm -hmm. go through the show format. First of all is always Brandon Houck, who's very patiently waited for. He's, he's always second, but when we have special guests on, he's always good about taking a back seat. Thank you, Brandon, for being awesome. I think, again, Kim, thanks for this. Yeah, you're, like, you're so just, welcome. I am. I am. I am going to have to jump off, um, but I just, I'm so glad to know that this exists in the world and just want to really thank you for all your, all your good work and just want you to know that we see you and we love you and we support you. And if we have your permission, can we use your track mm -hmm. at the end credits of the show? 100%. Excellent. We'll do that. that. Mm -hmm. So now yeah, we, we, don't do that. we don't have to have anything signed because Rogers TV will have heard you say it on the show. 
Kim Gucci, yeah. songwriter. All good. Thanks again. So welcome. Have a great show, I'm everybody. To, I'm going to breathe awesome. for a minute. Well, Brandon Houck gives his report. Oh, yes, the Brandon Houck report. And it's uh, one of the best reports on the show here. And uh, we have some, not really, there's other really good reports in the show. There's, there's oh, yes. Uh, so we have some incredible weather scenarios. We've had, uh, well, we had that rain. We had that rain snow mix throughout last week. And now we are well in a warm up, a bit of a warm spell. Upper ridge of high pressure is taking over for the uh, remainder of the week. We had some pretty good convective showers. Some of us in Calgary had the first thunder and lightning and on Tuesday there. Uh, and then it all went to snow afterwards. So that was uh, that was a wild day on Tuesday. And the winds gusted 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. And uh, it just it howled. And we're going to do that again next Tuesday. But a little bit more, uh, yeah, more precipitation to go along with that. We'll explain that in just a second. Uh, so as we get into the weekend, we're going to see that upper ridge of high pressure take over. And we'll see sunshine, some giggles, you know, and daytime highs pushing your 20 degrees. It's going to be absolutely lovely out there. And then as we move on into next week, that's when we have an area of low pressure developing Sunday into Monday. And that's when things start to get a little bit on the weird side. By Monday, we have a cold front coming. Coming through, that's going to drop the temperatures here in Alberta. And as we go through the day, we'll start seeing showers developing. And we're going to have to watch the central northern portion of the province of Alberta for some of that snow to start to ramp up and through Monday there. Now, as we uh, go through southern portions of Saskatchewan, they're going to still be on that warm side of things. So expect those daytime highs to get near 20 degrees on Monday. And uh, I saw the GDPS pushing 23 degrees in Regina on Monday. And we'll see that uh, milder air continue to push its way across the eastern prairies as well. But when you get a cold front, you get that warm air and uh, meeting up with that uh, colder air and some moisture, that spells thunderstorms. And we'll have to keep an eye out for some thunderstorms to uh, ramp up across parts of Saskatchewan on Monday. We might see some of that activity moving to Manitoba, but I think you're going to stay. Uh, well, I think the thunderstorms are going to stay in, Man in Saskatchewan side of things. But we'll see that warm air continue to push its way towards the east now. The story as the system continues to move through, strengthens through Tuesday, Monday into Tuesday, we're going to see colder air start to rush its way into the province of Alberta, and we'll eventually see that big transition over to wet snow, and it all depends on how that temperature behaves here in Alberta, Tuesday into Wednesday, where we could potentially be dealing with a significant amount of snow. Now, if the temperature stays above the melting point, we're going to see a little more in the way of wet snow, so we won't have to worry too much about accumulation. However, some models want to bring that temperature down below freezing quite quickly there, and if it does so, we'll see a more significant amount of snow, and some areas at least at, in the 10 to 30 centimeter range for now, but uh, there are some signs we could see higher amounts of snow, which is re really good because we're still dealing with drought conditions in parts of the province. Now... The other story is, as that low continues to strengthen, we're going to see the wind start to ramp up on Tuesday and could be dealing with those winds gusting once again, 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. And you get that with the snow coming down. And if it's below freezing, we could be near blizzard conditions in parts of Alberta on Tuesday. And then that moves across portions of Saskatchewan Tuesday into Wednesday. Looks like we're going to stay. We'll start off as a heavy rain in Manitoba. And then on the backside of the low, as it moves its way across the prairies, we'll see that transition over to snow probably later in the week, Wednesday into Thursday there. So quite a transition on the weather front of things here in the province of Alberta. Now, the uh, wild stories that I have this week, apparently uh, McDonald's, well, they uh, in the Netherlands there, they've made up a scented billboard. So now you can go around and smell the French fries wherever you go in the Netherlands there. And then uh, earlier this week, as we had that solar eclipse, the uh, Google rating on why my eyes hurt ramped up because apparently people were looking at the sun. And, not and that was life. that was very specifically in states close to the path of totality. <laughs> yes. Like I saw a map and it was very specific Texas to New York. And unfortunately, the data set did not include Canada. But that was great. 
<laughs> that was brilliant. Yes. And that's the Branded Hulk report. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, I'm like still so super emotional right now that I'm hard, hard to talk. Um, Hank's outside right now. I don't know how long he wants to be outside for. So I'm tempted to see, check in with the guy who's outside. Cause maybe he's like outside waiting, thinking like, man, I would really like to not be outside much longer. I wonder when they're going to do me. Hank Leister, can you hear me? He's like sideways. Yeah, I am crazy sideways, aren't I? What the heck is going on? I don't know how this happened. I was oh. fine a minute ago. Could you turn the camera like that? <laughs> Hank has fallen is over. And it doesn't, oh, it doesn't, you're still, there you oh, go. Oh, I think I fixed it. Right Okay. On. So you're going to, um, there you are in Wilkie, Saskatchewan, Hank Leister, Storm Chaser, yeah. Hank Leister. And you may yeah. or may not be seeing some snow next week. Talk to us, buddy. Yeah, I hear there might be some snow coming. I haven't looked at that forecast myself. I was quite surprised. Um, I don't know how much it's going to be. Like, it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a major event because at this time of year, whatever snow we get is going to melt quite quickly, uh, I imagine. So I don't think it's really anything to be concerned about. It's just something that kind of is kind of neat. I enjoy a nice spring snowstorm ah hoping that we will get some and we could always use the moisture here we got an okay snowfall here in wilkie uh in the winter time which surprised me but uh we can we'll take more we'd love to have a little bit more yet I know in BC there, you're talking about low river levels and low snowpack levels. So I'm glad that at least here, we had it okay this winter, you know? Um, Hank. Um, yeah. So you're outside and we want to see your, your beautiful outside, but you got this uh, virtual background on that's fuzzy so we can't actually I, see. I have it i have it blurred right yeah we can't actually see the beautiful wilkie streets <laughs> uh trying to fix that uh, <laughs> where do, uh shoot somewhere on here on video options yeah uh talk to someone else and i'll try to get it fixed meanwhile How okay we can we can tell there's a tree behind you it's, it looks pretty good uh, we still have uh, Imogen Hilding and Mark Ingalls that we haven't talked to yet tonight on the show. We're about halfway through. I forgot what to go to. Oh, here it is. Backgrounds and effects. None. There we go. There we Look go. at that. Now, if I can get back. Back there. There. I got it back. Now I can see you. Yeah, Look so here's a, Such a here's quaint a little snow. town. Here's a snowmelt puddle. I'll show you a snowmelt puddle. Uh, <laughs> behind me. That's better than your puddle there, Brandon. Oh, I'll let my, my puddle there will be is. back next week. <laughs> jump in it, Brandon, Hank. Can you, can you jump in the puddle for us? Drink it. Puddle. Yeah, whichever is easier, whichever seems more appealing, either drink it or jump in it. Both are good. Yeah, either is acceptable. So we got this conundrum here because uh, we didn't have Imogen on the show last week. But also we had Hilding on the show last week and we didn't even talk to him. But then we got Mark who's got this huge segment lined up. I don't know who to go with first. I'm going to go with Imogen. Imogen, how's your last week been? Where are you? How's Victoria? How's the weather? And where you been? How you been? <laughs> I have been just completely buried in photography and modeling and planning the art farm anniversary party. So I've been tied up with that. That's what I've been doing. Weather is more of the same here. It's always like cloudy and then sunny and then damp and sunny and then sunny and cold, but still kind of sunny and then kind of damp. It's uh, everyone else has snow. We don't. We we get a sink sponge, and then it gets a little bright and shiny, and then it's back to being damp and 
gloomy but weirdly bright. If you can make sense of it, good luck. I can't. That's what it does. We just accept that our weather is all over the place and very undecided. So yeah, <laughs> that's what's going on here. It's largely been very boring weather here too. I mean, honestly, uh, what I call springtime variable weather. It's like, it's nothing, it's not really doing anything too much one way or the other. It's not, it's a little bit warm, but that's cold at night. And it rains a little bit, it snows a little bit, not too much, not a lot, but some off and on, you know, it's just springtime variable pattern. Not, you know, it's, it's it sucks for forecasting too. It's like, you know, Today, it's going to be uh, essentially same boring stuff that's been happening. Mark Ingalls, uh, we've been talking, looking at the snowpack in BC today and talking uh, on my YouTube channel, Joey Only Care Be Weather Do, but also uh, you and I have been talking about this because uh, this is part of, the, part of the thing that you do in your school of meteorology and your job is uh, watching snowpacks for, uh, for hydroelectric purposes. Yes, and you have yes it's really, it's on, really uh, important. You have some thoughts on on some of this data, I believe. Yeah, I actually um, I actually just pulled up the precipitation anomalies for oh, and I guess I turned it off. But for since for the water year, which started in October, and it looks like um, precipitation only. So this includes rain and snow, and doesn't consider temperature. Um, precipitation values in the Canadian Rockies are. 10 to 30% below average. The worst of it is on the Alberta side there, northwest of Edmonton. Um, there's probably a town there, but I do not know my way up there geography. Um, but yeah, it's it's really not in good shape, especially up north. Um, I don't know the name of that big reservoir kind of by Fort St. John, but that is that that plays really significantly into how BC Hydro runs their Columbia River dams, which then impacts the electrical market in the Western U S and Canada. Williston being um, one of the big ones there. Yeah, that's, that's the one, that's the one. And then, um, the, it, it, on the bright side, we're kind of having a slow melt out, right? Um, it's been kind of mild. We've had a couple of, periods where two or three days get real warm down here we in portland will we'll tap 20 and then for a couple of days and then slide back off in the columbia basin there in washington and they've tapped to uh, 25 a couple of times so i think the warmest it's gotten is 28 there in casco washington um but it hasn't been long lasting and so this has been pretty good for the snowpack um the the concern now now switches because we did not get enough snow in british columbia this winter um the concern now switches to are we going to have a cool and wet spring and if we do um that'll that'll grow a lot of that understory that catches fire initially and then if we have healthy well healthy in air quotes right if we have a lot of understory growth that catches the bigger trees on fire quicker um so those are kind of the things that we're looking at but um, I think you said on your video earlier today that the prevent the provincial average as a whole snowpack is like sixty seven percent of average or something like that. I think sixty three was the number. Sixty three. You know, and, and that's really, just not great. No, I, I really thought we'd be in better shape uh, going back a month ago. You know, I, I actually did. Maybe not significantly. Right. But uh, it, it tailed off faster than I expected, I guess is what I'm saying. And, and to look out here, um, we, like I said earlier, we're going to be snow free here in Wells before my birthday, most likely. We're, if we're going to start continuing to get these plus days, we're going to be able to start walking the baseball field by next week. That's never happened, man. Our ice in 2014 didn't melt off the lake. There was still giant chunks of ice floating on May 29th. Just to put that perspective right. Um, yeah, we're at four thousand feet gotta, in the mountains here. This is where snow is supposed to be. It's right. Not, I've got a weather page on Facebook called Tri Cities Weather. There's my shameless plug. It's for Kennewick, Pasco, and Richland there in Washington. But somebody commented on one of my posts today saying that Leavenworth, Washington, which is in the Cascades west of Wenatchee, they had their melt out about a month early. So. You know, it's kind of region wide. Oregon did fairly well. 
because the, we, we benefited from the storms that really went into California. But you get north of, um, like, say, Yakima, Washington, and from Yakima north in the mountains, it's all the way up through BC, it's not great. Yeah, I mean, what's maybe so far looking okay is we don't have any real heat coming, you know. Sure, we right, got some right. Above. It looks pretty. It looks pretty mild at least through you know the rest of April. Uh, like I said, one or you know we'll get those two or three days of real warm. In fact, uh, on Saturday we're looking at twenty three here in Portland, which I mean is is warm for this time of year, but not unusually warm. Uh, Tri Cities will probably probably hit twenty five, maybe as high as twenty eight again, and then cooler, of course, up in British Columbia. But we'll have these couple of warm days, and then back down to close to average or even a little bit below. Um, so the meltout is kind of slow, but like I said, the concern now switches to how much brush do we grow in the forests? Yeah, you know, that's a really good point you out. made too. It's a really good point you made because uh, last year. Um, the conditions weren't there. We got that really warm spell early in May and fires took off and there was not that undergrowth pattern that you're talking about, um, so much in the woods, you know, things were very dry. Things were very suppressed for growing last year across the board. Uh, when you're in the forest, it, you know, so that was, uh, yeah. anyways, yeah, more ground fields, more ground fields, more ground fields could be right. And the good news could be if we get into a La Nina pattern, we get lots of rain and that stuff can stay green. Well, that, that, that can't hurt things. So, I mean, it's still not set in stone. People think this is going to be worse than last year. I keep hearing that, but uh, I, I don't you know, know that. I don't know that. On that subject, like obviously it could be worse than last year, but last year in Canada, just across the board, the wild. It's the, hard the to number, beat last year. The number of hectares burned was so far and away above what we had seen in the past and it was like, it is it is hard to envision having that two years in a row like it we're is. talking we're orders <laughs> of magnitude worse than has been observed in the past in canada um and obviously you know there there we only have records going back so many years and blah 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 but still the point is this is a pretty big data set and it was like it is hard to describe just how far above old records it was. And so like it you know, if anybody tells you point blank, yeah, this year is going to be worse than last year, like no. You know, nobody knows that. First of all, nobody knows that in any year. But yeah. like if you're seeing a weather model, you know, I as a meteorologist, I'll see a weather model for 2 weeks out. And it'll say we're going to beat the all-time record high temperature in whatever city doesn't matter. Somebody will inevitably post that on Twitter and say with no context, just be like, it's going to be 50 C in Portland. The GFS says so. like, no, they're full of it. So, yeah. you know, be ready. Obviously fire season. It doesn't matter if it's a bad fire season or a good fire season or whatever province wide nationally, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a bad fire season if your house burns down. So, you know, well, you, that's you the thing, right? It, ready. it you can be 10,000 yeah. hectares burned. And if it happens to be your hectares, then your opinion might be it was a really bad season. Um, it was going to be hard to beat last year, no matter what. And I, I don't, I don't foresee that we will have that continued dry heat this year. In fact, you know, my suspicion has been for a while that we're going to have a thunderstorm pattern, more active thunderstorm pattern. You seem to think the same thing. Um, we could have yeah, a lot so more starts is, because of that. Do we right. have the conditions for really aggressive fire burning? Well, and the question also is, are those going to be dry thunderstorms or are they going to be pretty wet thunderstorms? You know, if, if we, if we have a situation where we have multiple days of wise, widespread dry thunderstorms, that is a huge problem. But if we have multiple days of widespread, pretty wet thunderstorms, like you said, there will be more starts, but it may it may not be that bad. Yeah, 2019 would be a great example. Like just very little burned. You know, there was a lot of lightning that year. There's a lot of rain that year in BC. What about what about my videos? Like my Calgary forecast. 
I think we're almost ready for that. Uh, before we do, one last thing. Hilding Donaldson, talk to us about the farm. We haven't talked to you in like two weeks, even though you've been here. Hilding Donaldson, talk to us about the farming and talk to us about uh, the drought situation as you see it in Grassy Plains, British Columbia. And talk to us about the cow that was born during the eclipse. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we, like I mentioned earlier, we kind of... Uh, had had a mix up with the neighbor's bull this year so we had our calves a lot early so we managed to have a calf born the day of the eclipse and it turned out that uh, the boss had uh, had uh, misjudged miscalculated the age of the cow and she was like 17 years old and he didn't realize it and it took all the effort she had to give birth to this calf, and then two days later, she dies of pneumonia. So now we have to find a way to uh, to feed this calf for the summer. But then, uh, right when he found out about it, here he found another cow out there whose calf got stepped on and and uh, perished because of it. And so uh, he uh, he said, "Well." If they if they cooperate, he'll be able to uh, wean the calf off onto the other cow, and hopefully uh, the cow will get enough comfort out of it that she'll allow the calf to uh, nurse her for the summer, and the calf will grow. So that's how things are going here on the farm. Um, we've been having uh, a lot of of uh, gusty wind and and snow squalls, but no real moisture. So we're still looking at it being extremely dry for growing crops, but uh, it's been kind of interesting. Usually this time of year, the loggers are, are uh, out of the bush because there's too many ruts and it's too muddy and everything else. But we've been having a solid frost every night. I think last night was the first night I noticed there was not a solid frost. And, uh, so as long as there's a solid frost every night, the trucks can still haul logs. So, uh, and we haven't had um, real fire hazards in the bush in this area, which is kind of unusual. We usually have the, the first fire hazard of anywhere in BC. And for a very dry year last year, it was amazing that we don't have the fire hazards this year that we usually have. So uh, that's kind of what's been going on around here. It, uh, and like I say, the, you feel like you wish things would happen and it'd be some, uh, spring and yet, and then stuff doesn't seem to happen as fast as you like it. But that's, I guess that's what spring is all about. It's been a slow spring this year. We got Frankie's video queued up and afterwards we are going to have Ask Frankie. So if you have questions for Frankie, be ready after these videos. You ready, Frankie? Yes. This is Frankie McDonald's oh, no, doing that thing where I can't life it. in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Major snowstorm is headed towards Calgary, Alberta on. I can hear Tuesday, it. Just April 16, 2024. It's going to bring up to 30 plus centimeters or so in Calgary, Alberta and its surrounding areas. It's going to bring blow drift so build. Um, I cannot hear this through my computer. And I'm having this problem with all of Frankie's videos that are recorded from whatever phone you were using, Frankie. My computer cannot understand it. It's going Frank, just fine. It's here Frankie right, McDonald to my old TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Major snowstorm is headed towards Calgary, Alberta on Tuesday, April 16, 2024. It's going to bring up to 30 plus centimeters or so in Calgary, Alberta and its surrounding areas. It's going to bring blow drifts or so, reduced visibilities, dangerous to stretch for shy conditions in Calgary, Alberta, Banff, Alberta, Canberra, Alberta, Drum Valley, Alberta. And High River Alberta and Henry Alberta, especially on Deerfoot Trail Highway 2 and Stony Trail Highway 201 and Glenmore Trail. And Glenmore Trail Highway 8 in Alberta is going to bring blown drift to so reduced visibility, dangerous to stretch for shop conditions. And people in Calgary, Alberta, you better enjoy your nice weather because the weather's going to turn cold and stormy and snowy in Calgary, Alberta. And streets, roads, highways, and trains can highway will be snow covered in Calgary, Alberta, and its surrounding areas. It's going to bring a lot of snow, including Drummond, Alberta, and Hannah, Alberta, and surrounding areas. It's going to bring a lot of snow, 
blown snow, drifted snow, reduced visibility, stains with stretch with shine conditions as well. People in Calgary, Alberta, be prepared. Heavy with the boots ready, with the jackets ready. Hats, gloves, and scarf, and ski pants is ready. Order your pizzas and order your Chinese food. Buy a case of Pepsi, buy a case of Coke. Do your grocery shopping. Don't wait till last minute. Do it right now. Make sure every smartphone, cell phone, stop top, tablet, charge. Every 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE you rent ready as well. When you drive a car, take your time driving car slow down so you don't get in car accidents. When you overwalk, be very good walking so you don't slip and fall. Make sure every furnace is in. Heat pumps ready. You turn on your furnaces and heat pumps to keep those warm. Drink lots of green tea, white tea, red tea. Drink lots of green tea to keep warm. Have your extra blanket, blankets ready to keep warm. So make sure if you shovel, snow scoop, snowboard, snow plow, salt trucks ready as well. If you have anybody living in Calgary, Alberta, be prepared for a major snow to run Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. You better enjoy your nice weather before snowstorm hits Calgary. Take care, stay safe. And don't get caught in a major snowstorm. Stay warm, be safe. It's Frankie McDonald. My dad, Frank McDonald, made his latest song in SoundCloud on Mystic Mist. And I'm. That's my dad's latest song. And I. On the SoundCloud Mystic Mist. He wrote his own lyrics. He played guitar all by himself. He wrote his own song all by himself. He played the guitar all by himself. Master his song, recorded his song all by himself. He did a lot of work himself. My dad's latest song is And I'm. On the SoundCloud Mystic Mist. He wrote his own song all by himself. Everyone, you could give, give it a listen if you want to. On my dad's latest song, and I'm on the SoundCloud Missing Mist for Frank Down. So whatever's going on, I cannot hear any of Frankie's videos. Get videos. hear my videos. It's been going on for like six or seven weeks now, Frankie, or more. There's Brandon hear it. Everyone else seems yeah, to hear him fine. So there's some code. I hear him fine. There's yeah, some coding I hear him thing fine. that's going on between your phone and my computer. And if anyone out there in the world of science or technology, because uh, this is a really technologically sophisticated show we're trying to be here. In fact, I lost my tripod that I usually have my cam on during the Daigo Abortions show this weekend up at Prince George. I don't know what happened. It fell out of the truck or something somewhere. Um, but I, that's okay. I found this cardboard box. It works really good for putting my cam on. So... There we go. High tech around here. So this is the kind of technology I'm dealing with. Cardboard boxes. Uh, please donate to the show. We are. We could use. We could use more cardboard boxes. We don't have yeah, enough. Yeah, this cardboard show. Boxes. This episode is brought to you by Boise Cascade cardboard cardboard products. Yeah, this show is brought <laughs> to you by cardboard boxes. Yeah. Anyone got questions yeah. for Frankie McDonald? I have I have two. Can I can I have two? Is that okay? Frankie, that's that's one question. Can he have can he have another one? All right, Frankie. Yeah. In your video about the snowstorm in Canada, you're standing in front of a place called Juice Box. And I want to know how is the juice from Juice There's Box? There's all different flavors of juice there in the summer months. Which one's your favorite? I like cherry juice. Nice. And how was your solar eclipse? Great. Compound Media came down to Sydney, Nova Scotia on Monday, Monday April 8, 2024 to look at the eclipse. Did people cheer? Yeah. Somebody all the way from Compound Media in New York came down to Sydney, Nova Scotia. And uh, did you take your glasses off when it got really dark in the totality? I had a partial eclipse in Sydney, Nova Scotia. At 5.45 p.m., the eclipse came to an end. What did it awesome. look like, Frankie? It got a little bit dark. Was it awesome? Yes. Yes. Yes, it was awesome. Yeah, I would like to have been oh. there. I'd like to have been there. Luckily, luckily the Daigo show happened last weekend. So it was like I got a consolation prize from the universe. You know, you can't go out East Joe. That's out of your uh, price range. It was, I looked at pick tickets in there like in the 1500 range. And if I'd probably wait another week, they would have gone up to 2000. The price of flights went crazy at that time. Mark Ingalls, you happened to uh, see the eclipse. Did you look at it with your uh, eyes? Uh, I did during totality. It was, it was, man, it was just, I'm not going to show any pictures because this is primarily a radio show, but oh, man, 
it was just incredible. And we we didn't tell my three year old uh, what why we were going to Arkansas in advance. And so we're watching it, and uh, she thought the moon was eating the sun. Uh, and then when the when the totality happened. Like this is the second time that I've seen a total solar eclipse and it's still just the most incredible natural event I've ever seen. Like we're standing there, people cheer. We're, we're at this campground. This is the first time I've ever flown somewhere to go camping, by the way, we're at this campground in Arkansas <laughs> and there's a boat going past playing songs from Alabama and you know we had to watch out for the banjo wielding meth lab technicians there and uh but it was it was really just it was great i i put up my put up my portable weather station on my wife's photography tripod there on the roof of the jeep that we rented um man like it there are no words to describe what it's like when totality begins and you can see the emissions coming off of the sun and like there was there were some solar prominences which are kind of like solar flares typically will come off of solar prominences and so they're like these big loopy things that extend thousands of kilometers from the surface of the sun and we could literally see two of them at the south pole with the naked eye and it like man it was just the best thing and everybody cheered and my daughter like could not stop talking about it it was so great i really wish i can I... re i can reenact the solar eclipse for you right now oh there yeah oh, oh oh there it is totality you better do it again because once we start talking we lost you once again hank the solar eclipse for those who didn't see it okay there's the sun now Oh, it's gone. The this sun is, is gone. This is really taking me back. You know, I can almost hear Alabama in the background. Yeah. There you go. Hank Vlistra has eaten that water tower. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. I yeah, I would like to even if I couldn't have gone all the way to Sydney, I probably could have afforded to go home to Ontario. And I know my mom would have loved that. And my ex-wife was even pushing me. You should go home for your birthday. And then, uh, you know, and then Daglo came and it, it, that's also a once in a lifetime thing. A band like that coming to Wells, BC here in the mountains, man. It was so good. So good. It was like mental health medicine. That's what I was telling them. Uh, I said to Murray, you know, like, uh, waiting all winter for something to happen. You know, it's like, it's like mental health medicine. He's like, yeah, well, me too. And I was like, yeah, I guess you just spent the winter recovering from cancer you're probably pretty happy speaking to get of out. cancer speaking of cancer oj simpson died today that's right that's right so uh now oj can finally rest because his wife's killer is dead <laughs> did, you, did you hear about this on the autobahn people could drive 400 plus kilometers per hour on the autobahn well what happened if oj simpson went 400 kilometers an hour on the autobahn frankie then we then it'll be even faster than that Wait, what can if he went can faster a Ford than Bronco, that? Can a Ford Bronco go that fast? Not yet. I okay. guess if like OJ was going 400 on the on the uh, he would get away. That's what would happen. And we yes. can't have that. Yeah, I'm sure my Bronco does not do 110. But you know, I'll always remember OJ by all those Norm McDonald jokes. About OJ killing people. I love those ones. Yeah, did they did they really slay you? Yes. Yeah. They were they were deadly jokes, man. Deadly jokes. Well, we are coming to the end of the show this week. And uh, it's been a really special episode. Kim, Kim Gucci, who designed the Prince George Cougars Indigenous Day uniform. I mean, check out you know, this. It it really is too bad that the Prince George Cougars are going to lose to the Portland White uh, Winterhawks here when, when it comes time for that to happen. I feel like, you know, if the playoffs are going to continue positively for Prince George, I need to get up there and go to a game now. 
you know, it's just sort of like a, like I left the house and went to an event last week and it's like, I'm feeling more and more ready to start coming out of my shell that, I mean, I, I just gotta be honest. Like when I got sober, it wasn't because I was like, you know what? I want to make my life better. It was like, cause I had a nervous breakdown and couldn't function. You know, I was like, Why the only way you... I can save my life is to never drink again. And, and so slowly, you know, things are coming back. I went out to a show this weekend and it was fun and people came over and I let people drink beer in my house. You know, I did, I couldn't, if you told me six months ago, I'd let people party in my house. I'd probably say, yeah, right. Why would I want that? And the thing is, I don't, it didn't, doesn't do that much for me, but having, having the band here and have, you know, having that safe space that everyone could come to afterwards and just hang out was kind of what it was partly about. Right. So, and, uh, great time, great time. Frankie, how can everyone find you out there on the internet? Cause people want to find, find Frankie. If you want to find me on social media, my blue sky is at Frankie McD. My Twitter is at Frankie McD. My Twitter now has a blue check mark. Are you paying for Twitter, Frankie? They knew me. Oh, they just, they grandfathered you in, did they? He, he came I'm by honestly. Because I was doing really good on Twitter for a while. And my link tree is Frankie McDonald. My Facebook is Frankie McDonald. My Instagram is Frankie McD ninety four. My TikTok is Frank ninety four. My Clapper is Frank ninety four. My Twitch is Frank ninety four. My Snapchat is Frankie M C D O N. My YouTube channel is Alex Wolves. And my LinkedIn is Frankie McDonald. Best of luck to you. I'm Frankie McDonald. You are listening to Joy Only Show Community Plus Meteorology. Community Meteorological Weather Report every Thursday night at seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Atlantic and Sun. C F U R eighty eight point seven FM Prince George. C K U W ninety five point nine FM in Winnipeg. C F B X. 92.5 FM in Candles is on Rogers TV in Vancouver Island. And that's the show. I'm Joey Only, and uh, we had my, my good friend Hillbilly Hilding Donaldson on tonight, as always. Meteorologist Mark Ingalls was back with us. Storm Chaser Hank Vistro in Saskatchewan. Brandon Houck, the man himself, of course. Image Cookie Bailey, our associate producer and television representative. And, of course, Frankie McDonald, the star of the show. And then we had Dan Barton. Uh, fan t- if you've ever seen Dan Barton drum, I mean, this guy is a drummer. So good. Love Dan. Um, and Kim Gucci, Prince George, singer-songwriter. Uh, I just can't thank everyone enough. I can't thank all of you enough. Um, I think we're going to end the show with, uh, with a Kim Gucci song that uh, was sent to me called Territory Welcome Song. That's the show this week, everyone. That's the show, Frankie. That's the show. That's the show, everyone. That's the show. Okay, that's the show, That's guys. not the show. Yeah, it is, Brandon. Yeah, it is. You're wrong. That's the show. Yeah, needs right. more of a social life. I'm always right. That's Brandon with his haircut. So as I said last week, men everywhere are getting haircuts right now. So um, try to find a time where there isn't 50 people at your poor barber shop. Poor Joe. I'm sure he's still cutting hair. Uh, it's been so crazy. Everyone in Cornell needs a haircut. Okay, that's the show. Bye. Need your presses. There we go. I I meant to pit stop recording, and then I turned off my camera instead. There goes Frank. He doesn't even want the explanation. He's just gone. Imogen's gone. Uh, she's been very busy. She's having lots of success, and that's great. That's what we want. Um, and, you know, that's what's going to happen. And people come and go from the show um, every week. It's always, always a little bit different. And that's, uh, yeah, everyone's very busy. So we're really lucky whenever we do have uh, our friends, our friends here, whoever can come. So thanks, guys, for being part of the, part of the show. That was, a, that, was a, that was a special episode. You know, I, you know no one's really given me a soberversary gift of any kind like that, right? Um, yeah, I was actually going to say, um, so Kim wanted your favorite number and your address. So for a gift that I'm sending you, can I have your bank routing number and your account number? And possibly yes. your mother's maiden name. Yes. Yes, you can. Starts and by sending you, I mean taking from you. It starts with these two digits, this one and this one, and then add them a couple times. Uh, I should ask, what's uh, what happened to your toque there, sir? Ah, uh, the dog. Oh. oh, the dog did that. If okay. you not know, every week I've been trying to keep it so you can't see it. 
you know, this week I just had it out a little bit, a little bit too much. Showing too much dog. Oh, dog okay. chewed by two when it was a puppy. It, it hasn't chewed it for months. I mean, this is an old chewing. This is, this isn't news. This is, this chews isn't news, man. Chews news. That's maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll find a Tri City Americans toque and send it to you. Of course, we call them beanies down here. Beanies. I don't. What's with the word beanie? What is that supposed to like? What's the, with the word toque? <laughs> it's a French word. It means warm hat that goes on your head. You mean it, it's a French word that means beanie? Well, toque no. Looks like a dog. Yes, beanie, we stayed at a beanie, house. Man. We stayed at a house with a dog named Toque. Hmm. And in Saskatchewan, yeah, they have bunny hugs. There you bunny. Go. bunny. Bunny hugs. Yeah, my. That is a sweater, as what everybody else in Canada calls it. But they call it bunny hugs. Just a hoodie. It, that's all. Does it Hoodies, feel yeah. like a bunny hug? You know, if it comes straight out of the dryer, you know, it could be a bunny hug. Well. Sure. <laughs> Hi, my have to mute. I got dogs making a big deal about me. <laughs> and then we show them on the map. Right, oh kind of a big dog. deal around that neighborhood. Do you want to show them? My daughter wants me to show you this bit of some place on the iPad map. Oh so yeah, yeah. I love McConnell that spot. Road. Let's see, where is? I've Green been there is? before. Oh, that's oh, actually. Oh, it's Cornell. And, oh, it's right up the street from my house. We've hiked up there. So Frankie's got a blue check mark um, on Twitter now. Elon Musk admitted he may have done more to financially impair X than to help it. What? Who could that, have guessed? Elon figured it out. Elon. It's a real low point. Even Elon. You want to tell them about the eclipse? Nope. She's gone. So yeah, I was watching the uh, the live webcam at Mazatlan when just before the eclipse, because I knew it was moving in. It was a live webcam, and you can hear everything that's going on in the streets and stuff. You can see the waves coming up against the ocean. It's all daylight and everything. And all of a sudden, you see the light get dinner, dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and there's crowds of people out on the streets and on the beaches and stuff down there. And then all of a sudden, it goes dark, and you can hear the whole city erupt on the webcam. And I got goosebumps. That was probably my probably the awesomest thing that I've seen this year. Is that solar eclipse at Mazatlan there, and then just everybody going nuts. <laughs> Totality it was, hit, man. It was like we we one of the more interesting things was we were watching the shadow of the eclipse. So it, it was it was almost like a big storm was approaching and we were in the shadow of this storm. And so looking towards the southwest, it was getting really, really dark. And of course it was it was pretty dark at this point there. Um because we're north of ninety five percent eclipsed at that point, but it was just getting really dark, but you look behind us towards the northeast, and it was still quite a bit lighter over there. And the the colors, when it's like ninety seven, you, no, you're you're okay. Um, the when it was the colors when it's ninety seven percent eclipsed because there's still quite a bit of daylight out, but it's not the same coloring as like at twilight or. Um, uh dawn sorry i don't know why i forgot that word um it, it's just totally and, different unique right it, and it almost had like a yellowish hue to it you know i was gonna say it's a rusty dark isn't it yeah it, that's that's exactly right so it's so it's somewhere between twilight and the stereotypical sepia that you get when you cross the border into mexico you put right. those two together and that's what it was like yeah, that sounds amazing. Highly recommend. All those cool shadows people see, too, that are, have the crescent shape and stuff. Those are Yeah, neat. exactly, exactly. Um, so we're all going to Brandon Houck's house, 2044, 
Yeah. Meteorological report live in person. All of us together. Hang- Hilding's bringing his uh bringing his calf. Oh yeah. We'll be Watch there. Him. He's gonna ride his calf over there from <laughs> grassy plains. I can't wait because you know we'll still be doing the show by that time. That's we'll finally have achieved success. We'll have been at it so long. We'll be huge by then. Yeah, we will be on a total of four radio stations by then. Plus Rogers <laughs> on Vancouver Island. Nick, we could be bigger. Joey's going to be kidding? rich and famous. Nobody then. cares. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, like amazing 70, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me so many of my friends don't know that I, I, I make the show every week, right? So I, I'm not good at promoting it. And part of it's because I'm kind of shy. It's like I, even when I was uh, a professional musician guy, I did not really enjoy being like, look at me, you know, even though like that was my job once I got up there. I had to be that guy. Like that was fine. But, you know, it, it took me a long time to get really good at, at having firm demands with promoters, booking agents, you know, like took a long time to, to self-promote and feel good about that. Uh, here's top story and, and bullshit news this week. We now know what uh, what Bigfoot calls humans. I can't quite see it on my phone, but... Uh, it says, uh, oh my God, it's Bigfoot, the ranger says. And yeah. the Bigfoot looks back and says, oh my God, it's Tiny Wiener. So, uh, Alex Jones is, is endorsed Pierre Poilever. Woo. Oh. Yeah. There's a great comment here, too, I think. No, it's not here. I bet. But, uh, yeah, that's bad. I'm surprised Alex Jones has enough money to be on a phone. I yeah, don't even know who he is. He's, uh, he used to have this, he still has a show, doesn't he? Didn't he get sued? I don't know sued? if he does, he but he's a, like, Big conspiracy theorist. If you've heard the joke about um, fluoride in the water turning frog (laughs) gay, that came from him, and it was not a joke when he said it. Okay. That's all I need to know about the guy. Uh, Next Rapture's coming. Next Rapture's coming, by the way. April 23rd. So uh, the eclipse failed. But don't worry. It's just off by a couple weeks. Oh, yeah, I heard. I've got I've got six rapture I've got six punches on my rapture card now so I'm ready for my wow. tenth one to get my tenth one free. Seems like weak theology. Woman says God told her to shoot interstate drivers because of the eclipse. That sounds like strong theology to me. I mean, this looks like the kind of woman that's receiving visions from God. Generally, generally, yep. Um, you know, it's it's completely. <laughs> It's completely yeah. sensible to me why God will want you to shoot people in Florida, but say no to woke glasses. Oh so many communists wore those at the, during the oh. eclipse. Oh, so they're trying yeah. to say... Did you wear some of these glasses? You don't wear those glasses if, you, uh, if you're a, you know, a Republican person that that's what the woke people do. Is that what they're trying to say? Yeah, you don't need science to tell you what to do. Just really? stare at that wow. sun, man. Sad. Nothing can happen to you. Sad. Just all they just all what they want Amazing. you to believe. This was an advertisement that came up on my it was sponsored. Some people paid to put this on my thread. I don't I'll save you reading it. It, it doesn't it not make sense. But it starts off with the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps. I'm like already I'm like, what the heck? Ten who talks about ten virgins anymore? And aver- it pays for it to be on my Facebook. So that's yeah, just know. a little. Well, talking about ten virgins, how are you going to meet ten virgins if you're not talking about them? That's true. That's <laughs> true. Um, so Marjorie Is Taylor Greene. Once again, she's uh one of the spiritual leaders of the nation. <laughs> she yes yes my faith is really based on her, Donald Trump's Bible, and <laughs> uh, um. Matt Gertz or whatever his name is. Uh-huh. America, how many Americans eat this up? It's crazy. There's a flat Earth eclipse. So if you ever see uh, that, that's when the flat Earth is it's, on its side there. And it's not just Americans either, as you know, Joey. 
So anyways, uh, oh yeah, this was good. Uh, here's another advertisement that came up. I like to hit the laugh emoji uh, for these ad. So I can keep laughing at them, but also, because uh, they keep coming up, I can keep laughing at them. But also, if I react to the, this crazy bullshit advertisement, that means one less person who might actually take it seriously will get to see it. Because there's, there's a budget, right? Uh, How many people will react to it? If you, if, you ever take a, if you ever get an ad on Facebook, pay for an ad, Every time someone reacts to it, your your funding your, your your pot goes down, right? Right. So either either you pay more to reach more people, or you reach less people because somebody who knows you're an idiot uh, reacted to it. Bird flu is super big in the news again, and here's the homeopathic remedies to help you with bird flu. Like, okay. I want, I want to know what the homeopathic remedy is to that. Actually, I'm really in the market for that. Um, <laughs> there's a ten cent solution, right, Hilding? This is the old water. There's water for you. The homeopathic <laughs> remedy for bird flu is a ten cent solution, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think Mark knows what the ten cent solution is. Uh, I don't know, but I was thinking it could uh, come in the form of millimeters too. Yeah, the, the ten cent solution is. A... Oh, so we we're we're on the same pat track, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a Canadian Canadian farmer talk. Yeah, you got a ten cent solution. I got a nine millimeter solution. Yeah, the Americans I use miles and pounds. The Europeans I use kilometers and kilograms. The Canadians sorting a line of assorted measurements. Measuring system, I'm 5'3", 150 pounds, horse weighs 1,000 Ks. My house is an hour away. I drive 80 kilometers to get there. I need a cup of flour and one liter of milk. You know, and it's, it's yeah. really bad. If you're, if you're ever buying drugs in Canada, you have to know all forms of measuring. All, weights all very measuring. normal to uh, me, but, you know. I've bought, I've bought drugs in Canada. That's how most Canadians learn about measurements, actually, is buying weed. <laughs> I have not bought those kinds of drugs. In I Canada. don't buy that. I just bought Sudafed because it is restricted here in the U.S. It's restricted. You're yeah, because apparently you can make meth out of it. What about freedom, man? You you, you can have AK-47s, but you can't have you can't have Sudafed. Yeah, what the no, no, deal there? Good if point. I go, so if I go get Sudafed at whatever the Fred Meyer or whatever here, um. They literally scan my they they scan my driver's license and it goes into this federal database and you can only buy so much fed Sudafed in a month. And so you had to buy it in Canada because you want so much? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna tell you more than just I have bought Sudafed in Canada. <laughs> It was at Walmart in Calgary, and my wife paid loonies and toonies for it. Loonies and uh -huh. toonies for it. Um, it was cheaper up here? Oh, yeah. It's quite a bit cheaper, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Not bad. If any of your neighbors, Mark, uh, are preparing for the eclipse on, or the rapture on the 23rd, uh, what I suggest you do is, is uh, leave random clothes outside of your house so it looks like you just kind of vanished, you know? You know, I don't think anyone in the urban core of Portland is really going to get that. This is a pretty. This is one of the most atheist cities in the in the country. So, that might be lost on the people here. <laughs> so, chemtrail bans have been introduced in seven states. Oh, I heard Tennessee was doing this, and like. All right, so what are you going to do? Just ban airplanes from landing in Nashville and Memphis? Like, that yeah. sounds like a win for people. This who is the stupidest thing I've ever in. heard, man. Oh, my God. I can't believe I just saw this. Pennsylvania State Senator Doug Mastriano made headlines recently when he floated legislation that would ban chemtrails, which aren't real and only exist in the mind of unhinged conspiracy theorists. It's not an original bill. Uh, it's similar to when the passed in Tennessee. They're far the only chemtrail bill is being introduced to in the country. And when you know it, sponsors, uh, sponsors are all Republicans in Rhode Island. Uh, Elaine Morgan introduced SB 2540, which would prohibit stratospheric aerosol injection, solar radiation, modification, experimentation, other hazardous weather engineering activities. These people, they really don't, they're trying to do anything they can to create this narrative that climate change isn't real. Right. Right. I was going to say, 
these people are so excruciatingly close because the aviation industry actually does contribute something like 3% to climate change uh, of our global emissions that go into climate change. But no, they are spraying like those clouds you see for anyone listening, in case you happen to not know it's water. And we could go into a physics lesson about that. If you really want, send me a message. Find me, EnglesWX.com, and I'll tell you all about it. But uh, it's just water. I love when people tell me they're going to educate me. Because I, I never heard of this stuff before. Like, Buddy just found out last week, and he's like, now he's all radicalized. He's like, he's going to educate me because I'm a sheep. I'm like, dude, I was going to jail for fighting the government when you were still telling the government to send me to jail. Uh, Minnesota State yeah. Representative Jeff Jeff. Dotseth, Dotseth. Who votes for a guy named Jeff Dotseth? You, how do you even say his fucking name? Jeff Dotseth. Jeff Dotseth. I don't know. Jeff Dotseth. It's like suffering succotash. Jeff no, Dotseth. No, no, it's Minnesota, so it's got to be Jeff Dotseth, though. Yeah, this would ban polluting atmospheric activity or use an unmarked identified aircraft or any other vehicle or facility. Wait, wait, wait. Jeez. He's gonna ban polluting atmospheric. Uh, atmospheric activity so like are you just not going to be able to drive in minnesota uh-oh yeah turn on your natural gas stove now this Get is un- hinged new hampshire state representative jason gerhards hb 1700 would outlaw intentional release of polluting emissions including cloud seeding weather modification excessive electromagnetic radio frequencies and microwave radiation dakota that's state senator really, that's- that's interesting how they word it because I just saw a listing. I didn't apply for it because I didn't want to work in Idaho, but Idaho Power uh, manages several reservoirs in mountainous regions, and they have a cloud seeding program to fill the reservoirs. Um, I don't know how yeah, people are like. People think this is like, you know, it's happening. Like, yeah, sort of limitedly. Can, you know, you can have some local local effects, sure. Tom Pishkey's. Here's another guy from South Dakota. Tom Pishkey. What a fucking name. Tom Pishkey and Jeff Dothith. They would ban intentional release of polluting emissions into the atmosphere by cloud seeding, weather modification, excessive electromagnetic radio frequency, and microwave radio. So these people really believe that these things are happening. Yeah. Or do oh, yeah. they really believe that? Are they just trying mm-hmm. to pander to an ignorant public? The you scary know, I thing think... is that they can sometimes arm themselves and go after the people that they think are responsible for the the thing that's not even really happening. And it's crazy. Yeah, they really believe it. Just wacko. Just wacko. Well, guys, I'm going to take off tonight, so it was fun to see you all. I think so too. I think it's that time. Eh? It's we're wearing down. What well, that was a really fun episode, and you can tell it's getting dark enough in here that you know the quality of my video feed is looking weak. Thankfully, thankfully. Yeah. No, I got a sweet shirt on today. Yeah, now you can go so cougar that, hunting next there, time you go see, to for groceries. There you go. That was just Perfect. a special design for one game, was it? Uh, I think yeah. I think mostly for one game, yeah. Nice. So it, it's beautiful. It is. You know, I, I saw it when Kim designed. I just and I said that was so. That's awesome, Kim. You designed the Cougars jersey. Like that's cool. I want one so bad. And then there was uh, the game was on, and it was a weekend, and the weather was bad. I had the kids, and it's just like it's it's just not easy for. Me. It's getting easier to imagine now. They're getting older, but. I'm just getting to that point. I wanted to go. I wanted to go to the game and uh, bring the kids to something to do. And we didn't end up going. And um, Anyways. Yeah, I'm going to love this thing for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. New favorite jersey. Especially the Leafs lost tonight, so I'm not putting that one on. <laughs> I guess that's this, That's it for us tonight. Uh I know Shelly's out there watching still, and Gary, Gary Boo Outlaw down there. So uh, thanks for thanks for being part of our show we make every week. Uh, I'll try to get the 
the process final version out early tomorrow as best I can. Sounds great. Okay, guys. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Bye, Brandon. Bye, Hilding. Bye.